students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Module 2, The Organisation of Living Things. In this particular video, video number 6, we're going to be uh, investigating the structure of autotrophs through an examination of a variety of materials. Now, with this as well as many of the other videos, what I want to do is give you kind of a, just a bit of an introduction because what we will be doing is looking at some different materials in class. There's no substitute for actually looking um, at plant organs, plant tissues, uh, to get an understanding of what's actually going on, how these are organized and how they function. It's much easier to do that for yourself rather than to just watch videos about it. So um, what I will try and do is just give you a little bit of a setup, some of the key points, some things to look for uh, when you're doing these um, particular investigations uh, and hopefully that'll give you just a little bit of the background um, for when you do them. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to look at tissue types in plants and in plants there are three basic types of tissue. The first uh, first type is the dermal tissue and for, for um, our purposes the primary thing that we're looking for in, in dermal tissue is the epidermis. So it's usually the outer layer it has responsibilities in the area of uh, water loss and minimizing that and also in gas exchange. And we may find, which we've done already, when we look at the uh, epidermal layer, we find uh, things like guard cells around a stoma, which um, is a place where gas exchange can occur. So the dermal tissue is kind of the outside layer of each of our plant organs, our stems and our roots and our leaves. And sometimes we find that some of these epidermal cells can also excrete um, material to create a cuticle or a, uh, a more water uh, a protective layer outside of the, the plant, usually on the upper surface, but it could be on the upper and lower surface of leaves, um, just to reduce water loss even further. Because water loss is always going to occur, we, we actually want water to continue to move through the plant, and we'll look at the process of the transpiration pool that actually allows uh, or drives that movement of water through vascular tissue. Um, so we don't want to um, remove water loss at all. What we want to do is to control it, regulate it, and minimize it in, in situations where um, that could be a problem for the plant. The second type of tissue that we need to talk about is vascular tissue. Vascular tissue is primarily going to mean we're going to focus on the xylem and the phloem, which are two very important types of vascular tissue. Um, they have different functions and they have different, uh, different appearance as well. So we'll try and have a look at some different material. Um, a very simple trick, something you've probably already done before, is to put something like uh, celery into water with food coloring. Uh, if you leave that in there for a couple of hours, you'll actually notice that the food coloring is actually moving up um, and, it, and after a while it may even actually, you may see the color appearing on the leaves themselves. Um, this is one of the characteristics of the movement of material through the xylem and is something that we're going to be looking at in a little bit more detail, again, in the classroom. Um, the final uh, type of tissue is really the bulk of the plant um, and the different types of uh, ground tissue are often related to uh, the deposition of different materials in the cell walls. So we have things like parenchyma or colenchyma or sclerenchyma. different types of cells that are part of that ground tissue, the bulk of the plant. And that can pretty much go from the um, dermal tissue around the outside all the way through into the center of the plant, um, with the exception, of course, of the vascular tissue. So it is the bulk of the plants. A lot of what we see are these different types of ground tissue. And what we want to do is have a look at some of the key uh, parts of the plants in order to understand how these tissues are distributed and something about their, their various functions. In our first uh, video, when we looked at autotrophs, we recognized three key uh, organs that are part of plants. And the first of those are leaves. Uh, leaves are critically important. Um, if, you would, if you think about each of these different organs as what do you think is their primary purpose? Um, I would think with the leaves, uh, if you'd say the primary uh, purpose is photosynthesis. This is where the bulk of photosynthesis occurs. Uh, it's the place where they catch capture the light. So that's 
um, about maximizing surface area in order to do that. It's also because the process of photosynthesis occurs here, and we know that photosynthesis occurs in chloroplasts. We need to make sure that there are cells with lots and lots of chloroplasts in them in order for that high rate of photosynthesis. You will have an opportunity to look at transverse sections of leaves, and when you do, you'll see things similar to what you're seeing here. Um, the upper epidermis, you see there's no, um, there's no little green dots in here, no um, photosynthetic um, organelles, no chloroplasts in there, and that's, that's pretty typical, often they are not. Um, but you can see a waxy cuticle, the material that can be excreted by the epidermal cells to just coat over the top and reduce water loss from the plant. But underneath that epidermal layer, we have these mesophyll, this middle, these middle uh, cells that are highly photosynthetic uh, and filled with chloroplasts. There's a more organized arrangement for the palisade mesophylls, which are the ones that are closer to the upper surface. And you can actually see them sort of sitting in nice, neat columns when we look at the plant, uh, when we look at the cross section of the leaf. Um, and the spongy mesophyll, which do tend to be a little bit more disorganized, more air spaces between them um, and more opportunities for gases to diffuse um, through this part of the plant. And you can see that these air spaces are, are continuous with the stoma and allowing for materials to be moving both in and out. And we know that water um, is going to transpire, it's going to be released through the stoma, but will also be um, drawing things like carbon dioxide in through those uh, air spaces. The lower epidermis is, uh, also has these guard cells. Uh, the guard cells often do have chloroplasts. It's worth having a look to just see if you can see the chloroplasts in those guard cells when we look at these cross sections um, to, to get a real sense of all the different things that are happening. Now, quite obviously, there's a very important type of tissue that's missing from the leaf that we would also find, and that is the vascular tissue. And it's easy to tell the vascular tissue. We often call it veins. Um, usually most leaves will have a centralized midrib, which will be the, the sort of the key transport pathway in or out of the leaf, and then veins that are running off the sides of those. Sometimes, depending on where you're looking at your leaf sample, you may not have one, um, as in this di uh, simple diagram here, but uh, you may also find that there is vascular tissue, there is xylem and phloem that is also part of these cross sections of the leaf. So um, these are some of the things that we might see, some of the key structures, the key cells that make up this very important organ. The second very important organ that we need to have a look at is the stem. And I guess the, the, the stem could be regarded um, as it's in terms of its primary function as transport. Now, ideally, plants do want to get closer to the sun because they're going to maximize the amount of light that can reach the leaves. So that means they need to grow tall. But the problem is that you, you want to make sure that there's no backbone, there's, there's nothing um, specific in terms of a, a structural system that supports the plant. Plants are supported really individually in each of the cells. Uh, materials that come in and strengthen the cell walls, uh, particularly like lignin, um, are able to um, create strength in the stem so that those stems can withstand um, strong winds, they can be blown around, um, they can take heavy loads, not just the, the, the branches and the leaves themselves, but also uh, think about how heavy they get when they get wet. Um, the stem provides this um, support as the plant grows, but also enables um, very, very important transport that occurs. And of course, the thing that's really interesting about the stem when we start to look at it is that part of the support structures are, um, are also transport structures or vice versa. So, so structures that we find dominating um, our transport mechanism uh, within, the, within the plant are also ones that can be uh, strengthened to provide support as the plant grows. 
What you'll notice um, is again a lot of ground tissue, a lot of tissue in the center of the stem, um, dermal tissue around the edges, around the outsides of the stem, and then distribution of vascular tissue within. What we haven't done is we haven't looked at our different plant groups. One uh, of the plant groups, the angiosperms, are our flowering plants. And flowering plants can be split up into two groups, monocotyledons and dicotyledons. Um, these are not things that I think at this point are, are critical for you to know. The only thing that I guess is relevant at this point is that the distribution of vascular tissue, the vascular bundles we call them, um, does differ from monocots to dicots. So depending on which plant you get, which plant you, you can um, provide a, a cross section or a transverse section through um, to see, uh, will be determined by which of these groups that they belong to. So whether you'll see vascular bundles that are kind of randomly distributed all throughout the stem as, as we see in the monocot, or whether you've kind of got this um, radial arrangement running around the outside, uh, which is what we see in the dicots. You can also see that within the uh, vascular bundles, we've got three distinct regions. If we kind of sort of pulled them out, we'd find xylem, um, xylem tissue sitting kind of closest to the center of the plant. Then we have cambium tissue. Cambium is, um, cambium is undifferentiated tissue that can become um, specialized vascular tissue later on. And then we also have phloem. Now these uh, terms may still not mean very much to you yet. You may know that water and salts are transported through the xylem and um, organic material through the phloem. The xylem tends to be a one-way system bringing material up from the ground, uh, whereas the phloem can uh, transport material in both directions. Uh, but these are things that we'll look at a little bit later when we look at our transport systems in a little bit more detail for plants. At this stage, again, the key is to, to have a look at these three different types of tissues in plants, the dermal around the outside, the vascular bundles, those vascular tissues, and then the ground tissue that's sitting in the center of the stem. And likewise, roots and um, we won't sort of talk about roots as much um, as we uh, did with the other two, except to say that as for uh, stems, the distribution of vascular tissue in monocotyledons and dicotyledons uh, of the flowering plant groups is a little different. So again, you will find some differences in the way that the vascular tissue is identified. The thing to look for are these really large cells. They are the clue that you're looking at xylem. The primary function of the uh, roots, well, we could probably argue a little bit about this because just as I mentioned that support was a very important part of the stem, but not the first thing that I wrote, um, transport I think is a really important function of the stems. Support is a really important um, structure of the roots as well. And, and in fact, if you do not have a strong root system, the plant will fall over, it will, it will die. But I think one of the things that's really important about roots um, is water absorption. Now that's not to say that um, it's the only thing that roots do. And certainly there are some very important salts that are going to be absorbed from the soil through these root hairs as well. But the key for the roots is to try and make sure that they, they keep water moving in and through the plant. And they do that through, again, one of our important biological concepts, that concept of surface area to volume, large surface area of these little root hairs that are uh, increasing the surface area of the, the root itself to be able to draw as much moisture as possible from the soil into the plant and, um, and then of course up to the leaves where it's needed for photosynthesis. Once again, we find the same distribution of those three different types of tissues in the roots. We find the dermal tissue around the outside uh, of the plant. Uh, plant's roots. We find ground tissue in the center. And in this particular example, the distribution of vascular tissue is right located right in the center. And this is where we see our xylem and our phloem and our cambium cells that are going to become specialized at some point uh, further down. You'll know if you've ever dug up um, plants, uh, either very young plants or, or trees, 
that roots like, like stems can also be reinforced. They can be hard and woody uh, or they can be soft. Uh, and this is again um, one of the things that contrasts these different types of ground tissue in terms of what sort of material is being deposited in the cell uh, walls. And also um, as the uh, we uh, one other thing I haven't mentioned about xylem and phloem, the xylem um, vessels uh, or tracheids, depending on what we're looking at, are, um, are dead cells, and they can also be reinforced. So those uh, cells themselves can um, uh, be very important component of the support system of the plant. So this is just a quick overview. Hopefully you'll get an opportunity in class um, or on the internet <laughs> if this uh, if Corona keeps going to have a look at a range of different types of microscope slides, of cross sections, uh, and also at a macro level of plants to understand these different types of organs and the role they play in the survival um, of each individual plant. Uh, thanks for watching.